I got a Fitbit. Uh, as a person with a, a mental health history that is complex, I thought I'd make this video at the beginning of my like Fitbit journey. Just talking to you a bit about why I think it might help with my mental health, why I think it might also be a risk to my mental health, and then maybe if it's interesting I can revisit it in a few months and let you know how it's going. The Fitbit I got is a Fitbit, it's called a Fitbit Inspire 2, I'll show you. It's on a white strap, it's got like a black kind of screen thing. It's quite comfortable actually, I thought it was going to be really chunky but it feels totally manageable. So I've been wearing it for six days now and it, it feels fine. I thought it was going to feel way like clunkier and, and more uncomfortable but actually it's all right, I don't really notice that it's there. I basically bought it because like working from home, it'd be quite easy to have a day where I didn't leave the house at all and I don't really want that to happen. I feel like when I go out, I feel quite like connected with the world. Anyway, so I thought the Fitbit would help me take a look at how I'm actually spending my time and incentivize me a bit to get out during the day. I've obviously got some concerns about it as well to do with my mental health and how it makes me feel. So to give you a bit of background, um, I am 29 years old and I've been struggling with my mental health since I was in my early teens. So that's manifested itself in two major ways. The first is that I went through treatment for borderline personality disorder, which is a very misunderstood diagnosis. The other way it manifested was in an eating disorder, which I lived with for most of my adult life. My eating disorder was sort of a pattern of binging and restricting, lots of dieting, followed by binging, changes in my body that accompanied that um, and it was quite sort of unstable and, and turbulent. About four years ago I went through DBT therapy which is like an intensive group therapy situation and since then I've been living more or less symptom free. You know I'm not binging at the moment, I'm not restricting either and I haven't been for years. I, I have days where like my eating disorder rears its ugly head and I'm very aware that it's there. I have that nasty voice, that bullying voice in my head that tells me to restrict or tells me to over-exercise or whatever that might be. So um, that's the voice that I'm really conscious of when I'm thinking about this Fitbit. That part of me has a real tendency to take things to their extremes and a tendency to push myself too hard then feel like a failure. That's the cycle, isn't it? Like, you decide that you're gonna lose weight, change the way your body looks, you push yourself really intensely and set yourself up to fail with like an extreme challenge. So, you know, consuming very little or exercising an awful lot. And then when you fail, which is inevitable because you've set yourself up to fail, then you punish yourself by, you know, any number of things. But for me, like overeating, like a binge. So I am concerned that the Fitbit might fit somewhere in that cycle. But I'm also quite confident at the moment in my mental health and my ability to manage these things, see them coming and sort of take a different path. So what the Fitbit is set up to do, I guess, the main thing it does is it counts your steps, it counts the distance you've traveled, and then it counts the number of calories that it thinks you've burned. And that for me is obviously like an, a big no-no. I never wanna know how many calories I'm eating. Yeah, I just never wanna think about the way my body exists in those terms. My approach to life at the moment is very much like I eat what I want to eat when I want to eat it, that is healthy for me and it's working for me. I exercise when I want to exercise and that's working for me. I definitely don't want to attach a calorie count to anything that I'm doing or anything that I'm eating. So the way that the Fitbit app works is, this is the main page here, it's showing me how, logging how I'm feeling. So right now I would say I'm feeling neutral. I log that reflection and it keeps it for me. So I guess it's tracking my mood against my activity levels and stuff and my sleep. It's giving me a sleep score for last night, 78. I feel like that's all right. Um, that is like quite compelling. Like I do look at that when I wake up in the morning and I think probably that's not great either, but you know, it's not terrible. So I'm not super worried about that. Um, it's giving me a readiness score. I've got no idea what that is. It's telling me how many days of exercise I've done this week and it's showing me what my current heart rate is and my resting heart rate. And then it seems to want me to do 250 plus steps per hour, which is just not realistic. Like I'm not leaving the house every hour to do 250 steps, so whatever. Anyway, when I first got it, this is what the home screen looked like. It had my calorie count on it and I chose to remove that because I'm not interested and I don't want to see it. Yeah, like it makes me feel really unsettled. Like just looking at it just then, I'm suddenly thinking, okay, what time of the day is it? Like, why does the number look like that? Do I need to feel ashamed or embarrassed talking to camera about it and showing you that number? It's immediately sent my brain into 
mode. So yeah, I want nothing to do with that. So what I'm interested in is my step count. I've set myself like quite a modest target for each day. I think I've set myself a target of 7,000 steps. If I hit it, that feels good. If I go past it, that feels good. But I really, really didn't want to set myself something unrealistic um, that I was going to fail to reach and then was going to feel really miserable about because that would be the start of my cycle, my eating disordered cycle. So avoiding that as much as I can, just setting myself like really soft targets and that seems to be working for now, but we'll see where we get to with it. Yeah, so my, my plan was to try and use it as a way to like get out into the world more. It's not just about like being more active, making me feel better in my body and whatever. It's also that like, I think it's quite easy when you're working from home and like in your home a lot to like almost feel a bit disconnected from the world. Whereas when I go out, we live in a city center like when I go out into the city centre, I suddenly feel like, oh look, there's like people everywhere, I feel connected, I feel like part of something and there's something that like shifts in my brain. I was hoping that this would be something that could get me doing that a little bit more over the course of a day. Like I don't need a dramatic change or anything. At the moment, I feel like a bit competitive with myself about it, but in a, what feels for now like a healthy way, I'm just keeping an eye, keeping tabs on everything. I just, I, it does feel like it's something that could, if I had a bad day, a bad mental health day, perhaps this could not be such a great thing. But on a good mental health day, it feels like a really good, a really positive thing. The other thing about the Fitbit is that the app is basically designed for like a full 360 degree health and wellness experience. So it's got a mindfulness section, which I actually found really useful. But the other thing it's got is um, it tracks it asks you to input, it's got no way of measuring this itself obviously, but it asks you to input the amount of water that you're drinking and what you're eating. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go anywhere near that. Like there's no world in which it's a sensible idea for me to be measuring what I'm eating. That's not something I will be touching with a barge pole, but um, I appreciate that for other people it might be interesting or important. But yeah, just like, I guess I'm just trying to like bear in mind that the app is not designed for people like me. I am having to modify my experience to make sure that it's not actively detrimental to my mental health. The other feature that the Fitbit's got is that you can link up with your friends. It has been fun, like, friending people who I know and love and feel safe and comfortable around. I feel very, like, vulnerable to judgement. Like, my self-esteem has been very low historically because of my mental health stuff. Um, and that's, and feeling like people are, like, looking at my activity levels or, like, any of this like personal health information um, is not the best. So yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. Like some of it's great, some of it's really exciting. Um, some of it I'm a bit nervous about and just sort of wary of and keeping an eye on. I think I might check in in a couple of months or something if I'm st if I'm still using the Fitbit and let you know how it's going. As always, give me a follow on social media. I'm human.jess on Instagram. And my little dog who hasn't been in this video is worried with it. And we're on this channel every Thursday at about 5 p.m. Um, making videos about mental health and our lives together. So yeah, tune in, subscribe, drop us a comment, drop us a like, all of it means the world to us, and speak to you soon.